Hi, I'm NJ Lindquist and I'm going to be talking about 10 essentials for successful writing. Writing essential one, accept the writer in you. Now that may sound a little silly given the fact that you're watching a video on writing. However, one of the things I have found over the past 20 years in working with aspiring writers or new writers and, and sometimes even published writers is that they sometimes have difficulty really accepting who they are. There are various reasons for this. Um, it could be that significant others downplay the, the whole creativity thing. Not just writers, but musicians, artists, any, anyone in that area of creativity sometimes has difficulty convincing other people that this is their dream and this is what they should spend a lot of time on. And sometimes it's simply because life gets in the way. We have to earn a living, we have to look after a family, there, there are all these kinds of things that just sort of push that desire to write or to be creative um, into a little corner. And sometimes we just try to pretend it's not there and just sort of leave it alone. So one of the things that you have to do if you want to get serious about this, and I think for you as a person, you have to accept who you are. And if there's a writer in you, then you have to bring that writer in you out into the open and accept the fact that it's there. Writing essential number two is nurture your creativity. Creativity doesn't necessarily flow in the normal life. We live in a world that has things coming at us. Often we're just trying to cope. And creativity is something that actually requires time and often freedom to daydream. It may require other people who are also creative to help get things going. And when they had wells, they used to have to throw a little water down just to prime the pump. One of the things I recommend for people is to hang out with other creative people. Those could be other writers, but they could also be musicians, artists, actors, anybody who has a little bit of creativity going. And just hang out and share ideas and bounce things around, brainstorm. Let that creativity start flowing. Too often we, we push it down and tell it, you know, to go away. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, when I'm, when I'm older, when, when my kids are grown, when I have time, when I'm retired. Well, no, it doesn't happen that way. You have to nurture your creativity all the way along the line, even if it's just taking 10 minutes a day. Writing essential three, recognize that writing is a balance of a number of things. These include what I have called ministry, what your writing does for others, business, the whole publishing area, promotion, everything in that, art, which involves more the creative side of it, and craft, which essentially is the work involved. Writing, um, it's, it's funny, we, we sometimes think of writing as something that anyone could do. I mean, we all learned how to write an essay or a story in school, therefore we can all write. Um, and at the same time, we revere those who have written and been published and gotten these mega deals and whatnot as though they were, you know, up on a pedestal. And the reality is somewhere in the middle. Everybody has the ability to write, but there is this thing called writing well. And it is a craft. It is something you have to work at. For me, I keep my whole writing in balance so that I know who I'm writing for, I know what I'm trying to do with my writing. I have that whole business side more or less covered. I'll have to say that's my least favorite part of it. And then the art, allowing myself to be creative, to come up with new things. And the craft, the editing, the rewriting, the having other people give me input. So recognize that it's not just a matter of sitting down, writing something, and, and you're done. There, there's a lot more involved. Writing essential number four, identify and prioritize your ideas. I actually do this all the time. I have many, many ideas. And 
they're always battling to come to the forefront. So I keep an ongoing list in Excel that identifies everything I would like to write and what I am going to be working on first, and that changes. Uh, sometimes I am going to work on you know this particular thing now, and then I'm going to do something else you know way down the line, and then something will happen, and that thing that's way down on my list will suddenly jump near the front of my list. And so I, I like to keep that in front of me. Um, there are also a lot of tips I can give you on how to keep your ideas and continue to add to um, the files and so forth. And I will basically give you a lot of information on all of these areas. Writing Essential 5. Transform your ideas into manageable plans. Okay, an idea is simply that, an idea. And I could give a thousand people exactly the same idea and every one of them would come up with something completely different. That's because we're different people. Our backgrounds are different, our goals are different, our desires are different, the way we see things is different. And so what we have to do as individuals is to take that idea and say, okay, what am I going to do with it? How could it be written? Um, again, I find that a lot of, of newer writers have one idea and they have one thing that they want to do with it. And in fact, there could be a hundred or a thousand different things that could be done with that one idea. So I'm going to talk a lot about what to do with an idea and how to get more ideas. Writing Essential 6. Decide who will want to read what you want to write. In other words, we call that a target audience. It's strange, but a lot of us think, oh, well, everybody ought to read what I write which bypasses, um, you know, <laughs> reality because you know perfectly well that most people don't want to read what you want to write. I'm sorry, that's just reality. And if you take an inventory and ask people that you know what they read, you will discover they read all different things. That's why there are so many books and magazines and blogs out there. So you have to think about who really, honestly, 100% would want to read what you want to write. Writing Essential 7 is to learn what good writing involves. I have read a lot of writing that was bad, like really bad, and yes, yeah, some of these were published books. I have read a lot of writing that was great, and I've also read a lot of writing that was somewhere in between. In fact, probably the majority of what I've read from aspiring writers, first time novelists and so forth, is somewhere in between great and not very good at all. There are aspects of it that are great and there are aspects of it that need a lot of work. And one of the key things that you can do for yourself is to learn to understand what good writing is and how to get to the, that place where your writing isn't just okay, but it's really good. And there are a lot of, of, again, things I can talk about, practical things I can talk about to help you understand that. Writing essential number eight. Whatever you write, do it to the best of your ability. I find that a lot of people who are writers get really tired of going over what they've written. And in fact, I'm one of those. After I've been over something 10 times, I am so sick of it. I never want to see it again. But I know that I have to keep going. I have to go over it one more time. I have to try to be objective, which is really fun to do, uh, about something that you've written. Um, because I want it to be the best it can possibly be. And am I going to make mistakes? Am I going to throw in things that are wrong? Of course I am. Everybody is. We all are. But don't just slap down a first draft and maybe do a little proofreading or something and say you're finished because you're not. You, you've only just begun. That's the start. So do try to learn as much as you can and to do everything that you do to the best of your ability. Writing Essential 9 is to have a suitable marketing plan. In other words, unless you are just writing something for your family or to put on your blog because 
you know, you don't care if anybody reads it, but you like putting it on the blog because it means you actually write something. Um, I have nothing against that. There, there is no problem for that. If you are writing, um, for example, a, a book about your family history that you want to pass on to your children and aunts and cousins and so forth, then that's fine. You don't have to worry about a marketing plan. But if you want other people to read it, in other words, people you may not know, then you have to, unfortunately, in this day and age, know what you're going to do with it. And that may mean you're going to look for a publisher. It may mean you're going to self-publish. It may mean you're just going to put it up on your website, do social marketing. There are a lot of ways these days to get things out there, but you need to understand what those ways are, what is the best way for what you're writing, and come up with a plan. And writing essential number 10, put together a team that will encourage, support, and challenge you. Writing is not done in a vacuum. It's not done in isolation. We dream, or at least I do, of that beautiful cottage by a lake in the woods with me just typing away. And somehow magically my words end up in a publishing house and the publisher adores them and sends me enough money to keep living in my cottage and takes my words and transforms them into books which sell without my doing anything. And it's a wonderful dream, but it's not reality in any way, shape, or form. We need a team. We, we need people who will encourage us to keep writing. We need people who will hold us accountable and ask us, is that finished yet? Because I really want to read the ending. We need people who will help us put together our marketing plan, perhaps will officially become on our team as an agent or as our editor. We, we just need to be surrounded by people. And finally, of course, we need fans, we need readers. And we, we just, we don't exist by ourselves. So if you can literally start a team, even if it's one person who will be your writing partner or accountability partner, no, you don't have to show them what you've written right away. Uh, at some point you may want a critique partner or a critique team. At some point you'll want an editor. But the first start is just really encouraging you to keep going, to, to follow your dream. So if you want to stay in touch with me and know what I'm doing and um, when a new video comes out or when I do a blog or something, there are a number of ways that you can stay in touch. First of all, if you click on the arrow at the bottom left of this video, there will be a link that will take you to a handout for this video and more information including some of the links that I'm going to put here. Secondly, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and that's it, Write with Excellence, just remember that and then you'll be notified every time a new video is posted. If you follow me on Twitter, it's just write excellence without the width. And you can also link to my page on my Ann J. Lindquist website, which is called writewithexcellence.com. And that's where the handouts and other things will be posted. So if you can't find something, just go there. It's the go-to place. And if you want to connect with me personally, not just with my writing, information but my other things like my own books. Uh, my personal website is njlindquist.com. I also have an alter ego which writes mysteries and that is jamenzies.com. I also edit and publish the Hot Apple Cider books and that's the URL for them. My personal Twitter is just nj underscore Lindquist. Facebook NJ Lindquist author. And finally, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, again, NJ Lindquist. So those are some of the ways that I am out there in the real world uh, where you can connect. And um, But in particular, if you're looking for writing help, stick with the Write with Excellence. Those are the places you will find my help for writers. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope that I will get a chance to see you again.